What's going on guys? It's Woken Stoked. Since so many of you have asked for this, I'm going to go through an extremely detailed guide on how you can spend your winter months tinkering about to build this storage system that I have here in the FJ. No need to spend over two grand to buy one of these things. You can build one all by yourself and it's only going to cost you about four to five hundred dollars. Let's go. So this storage system has been serving me extremely well. If you've seen the build video, and I'll put a link here, you'll see that I started off with only the two drawers on the bottom. And over two years of using just that, I came up with a list and made a top edition to address all the missing things to make this the perfect storage system for me. And I'm sure you're going to find a lot of these things useful as well. And so I've been using this thing for the entire summer, as well as on the expedition that we did out in the mountains out west. and. Let me tell you, I've continued to discover things about this storage system that would blow my mind. I'm gonna go through some of those things with you before we get into the walkthrough. If you really wanna skip ahead, go to this timestamp right here. Otherwise, let's get into it. So, quick overview of this system. As you can see here, there are two drawers on the bottom. There are these paddle latches and slides on the side to allow these things to slide in and out nicely. Okay, and you could also push slam them shut. These two are slide tables, working surfaces basically. And top drawer here is exactly the same as the one on the bottom, just a little bit deeper. Up on the top here, you have a surface that you can put other things on top of. There's a lip here and in the back as well to prevent things from falling forward under braking. Same thing over here, there's a lip at the back. So if you're like me and you don't have a fridge and you only bring coolers out for camping trips or expeditions, such as coolers like this, what you can fit on top is one of these Coleman coolers on the side. It's the uh, 48 quart version. And then you can pack the remainder of this space with five milk crates. Let's also have some room here for a battery and a 10 liter water jug. And that fits perfectly just like that. And it's close. But it works. So the battery can go in the back here. If you want to set up when you get into camp, to start working, you can plug all your accessories in there while you work on these tables. Or what's really nice, swap these out and then you can have your battery facing the inside so you can have it facing everyone sitting inside and they can use these outlets and you can also have the charge cord long enough to plug in to the 12 volt charger of the car so this is really really handy works so nicely so on the side here what this system does is it basically closes off a little bit of a cubby and this system is tall enough to be able to fit my portable solar panels the ones that i use to charge that yeti 500x battery and i've always wondered about where to put these solar panels in the car to avoid having them bent and somehow after i built this thing just worked out so you can slide it in right into the slot and look at that just barely makes it to the top so your solar panels can get slotted in that small slot over there without getting damaged. And in the side slot over there, you can put like sleeping bags, bags, extra jackets, whatever you want to keep out of sight. And even if you don't need to bring all these milk crates because you don't have that much stuff, you should bring them anyways because first thing is they're super lightweight. You can see straight through the holes if they're empty so you won't be that obstructed. But the best thing about having these milk crates with you when you're camping, and we discovered this in the mountains, is that you can use these milk crates in tandem with these tables as an actual camp table. And I'm gonna show you how. So it doesn't matter if you have things in these crates or not, take out a couple of crates for legs. And then since these tables aren't bolted in, there you go. You don't need to bring a separate table. 
And if you need it taller, just stack two. And if your table is gonna be set up away from your car, you can have your kitchen supplies, your food supplies, whatever other supplies that you need in these crates and you bring it along with you and they're already a part of the table. So all you have to do is just lift up, go grab what you need, cooking supplies right underneath, cooking table right on top. This is the ultimate convenience. And you can do the same thing with this table. For whatever reason, if you forgot to bring enough chairs, here's a stool. Isn't this so amazing? So once you've loaded these drawers with all this stuff on top, this is how versatile this system can be. The final thing that I discovered here is how comfortable this setup could be if you want to use it as a sitting desk. I didn't account for this at first, but you would slide out your working surface right here and the bumper is just wide enough to sit one side of you, giving you a backrest at the same time. And so, if you go in, and if you're like me, you can stick your leg basically straight all the way there to rest it. You have your other leg standing on the ground, and now you have a perfect working surface. So you can sit up here and do whatever, whenever you want. You have a nice working surface here, and if the battery, remember when we put the battery right here, battery sitting over here, you can have this linking down, charging all your stuff. If you're not working, you could use this as a cooking surface, a prep surface, a whatever surface. This was pretty much all I was doing when I was sitting in the mountains, transferring my videos, doing video editing, all that great stuff. Discovering this definitely blew my mind. I don't even need to bring out a chair. All right, thanks for hanging in there with me. Let's get on to the walkthrough. So this is gonna be kind of hilarious because I already built this thing. But just for you, I'm gonna be taking that whole thing apart, laying down right here, going through everything step by step so you don't miss a thing. So before we begin, let's quickly go over the list of materials. So you're most likely going to need four sheets of plywood and it's your standard size sheets. I think it's like eight feet by four feet. And I forget the rest, so I'm just gonna read it off my phone. Two sets of 24 inch drawer slides, one set of 22 inch drawer slides, three drawer paddle latches. Uh, you're gonna need wood screws, two eye hooks, washers, two turnbuckle hooks, six two inch mending plates, as well as two bolts that I don't currently have the size for, so I'm just gonna put it here. Here we have the storage system in all its pieces. You have the main shell right here, all the drawers sitting like that, and the slide out tables. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this top section first, and we're gonna talk about the bottom two drawers. Here's the bottom of the shell, completely taken apart now. And now we're gonna go over the dimensions of this thing. So we're gonna start from the bottom. So the base and the piece measures 27 and a half inches long and 41 inches wide. Then you're gonna have four side walls. So there's one side wall here on the side, two in the middle here, okay, for extra strength and then another one on the outside. And so there are gonna be four of these pieces and those pieces measure 26 and 7 eighths inch by seven and a half inches. Then you're gonna to go to the back. So we have the back piece over here. And so the back piece, that's gonna measure 41 inches long and it's gonna also measure seven and a half inches tall. And then we have the overall top sheet, which is going to be 41 inches wide. And there's gonna be a little bit of an overhang at the end there, okay? So that's gonna be 29 and a half inches long into the truck of the FJ. Essentially, as you can see here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay the base down first. You're gonna put the sides and the back on top of this bottom base here and then you can glue and screw them all in together. And then that top sheet, that large top sheet is just gonna sit right on top. 
So don't worry about these rails yet. That's for the second edition. When I first built the set of bottom drawers over here, I only used 5 8 inch plywood, mostly for weight savings. But what I did notice was that the top sheet, when it was loaded with a lot of stuff, it would bow a bit. If you wanna just make these bottom drawers and not make the top that's, uh, that's over there, I recommend using uh, a half inch sheet here on uh, on the top. But if you are going to construct that and put it on top, uh, the strength of this sheet does not matter. So you can use 5 8 inch here uh, for that. All right, now moving on to the drawers. Okay, so here's one drawer and we're going to go over the dimensions of these pieces and the two drawers are identical. So just make two of them. I'm going to start with the base. The base dimension is 18 and a quarter inches wide, 26 and a quarter inches long. For these sides, the dimensions come in at 25 and 5 eighths inches long and six and a quarter inches tall. Now, because this sits on the inside of the drawer, you can go a little higher, you can go a little lower, it doesn't really matter as long as you don't go above the, uh, the front piece over here, okay? Because that's what governs um, the height. Now we go into the back. So the back is gonna be 18 and a quarter inches wide, and the height is gonna be six and a quarter inches tall as well, so it's matching the height of these sides. And the last piece here is gonna be this front piece. So the front piece is gonna measure 19 and one eighth inch wide, and it's gonna measure seven and a half inches tall. For these latches, you're gonna to want to cut a square of the dimension of the latches that you get, all right? So after you cut out this hole, you can just slide this right into place. I'm gonna drill four holes in these spots here and you're gonna bolt this paddle into the front. You can see as well, there's a little bit of a depression here and that space is meant for those mending plates at the bottom here. Because when your front door comes in, it's gonna need a little bit of space to, uh, to clear these plates. For these two drawers on the bottom, you're just gonna get these uh, 24 inch drawer slides. Now. If you want to use those paddle latches and you want them to slam into place, you're not going to want the soft closing ones. And then so you're going to get these drawer slides and at the end, on the inside there, I have it on my other video. Maybe I'll just throw it on here. It's that little rubber piece at the end there. That's what kind of holds it in place. So if you want to use those latches and just slam uh, the drawers closed and have those latches catch it, you want to remove these little bits here. That will allow the top section to basically go right all the way to the end. And then what you're gonna have is this latch that you've installed catching on this little mending plate, this two inch mending plate that I've double stacked on the inside top of the drawer here. Okay, so this is very important. If you're missing this, your drawers are not gonna be stable. Next, I'm gonna show you how to bolt this thing into your FJ to secure it so it doesn't bounce around, it doesn't shift in place. So here we have the back of the FJ, and if you don't have anything currently in your FJ, you'll notice that there are D-rings that sit in these slots over here, okay? And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna just unbolt those D-rings, you're just gonna be left with the hole. Um, I can't remember exactly what size that bolt is, but I'll find it and I will put it here. So these two are the mounting points in the back of the drawer. And then these D-rings further back in your FJ, okay? You're gonna leave those D-rings there and you're gonna use these, these turnbuckle hooks, okay? To hook in like this and secure the back of the drawer system. And here we see on this overhang lip of the bottom of the drawers, you have these eye hooks that are just screwed in to the base just like that. And there's one on the other side as well. This is what you connect that turnbuckle to. And then on the inside here, you just simply drill a hole to fit. 
Okay, so the hole is about two and a quarter inches inwards and about, I don't know, what would you say? Two and a half inches? Yeah, two and a half inches from the side. So let's drill a hole, make the hole a little bigger so you have some room to play with. Just grab one of these bolts with a fat washer. And one last thing that's very important, with these bolts that go in, you're gonna have to clear at least the head of the bolt with the bottom of your drawers. So that's why here, the front of the drawer does not sit directly flush with the bottom of the drawer. So this little small gap here is about 5 16 So just make sure to take that into account when you're measuring where to place your drawer slides. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about a really important thing now and that is the build order. First, you are going to want to assemble the shell, so the bottom, the sides, and the back of the shell. And then second, you're going to want to assemble the bottom, the sides, and the back of the drawers. Now, once you have both of those things done, the next step is to line up and install your drawer slides. Now, for these bottom drawers, you want to make sure that you leave a gap about the size of 5 16 or 3 8 between the bottom of the drawer to the bottom of the shell. And that is so that you can clear the bolt that we are going to be using to bolt this unit into the FJ. Once you have that lined up and enough clearance to clear the bolt, test the drawer slides and make sure the drawers slide in and out nicely. Once you're satisfied, then put the drawers in the closed position and then fit your front piece of the drawer on there. The reason that we install this piece last is to ensure perfect fitment with the shell. You might need to sand a little bit after the top piece is installed at the end, but this is by far the easiest way to do it. Okay, so I think that's it for the two bottom drawers. And now we're gonna move on to the top section of the drawer. So here we have the top section. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the dimensions of the top section, and then we're gonna go over the dimensioning of the side table, and then the dimensions of these little strips here that allow it to interface with the bottom section. The top section is pretty simple. It will run 41 inches uh, wide and 29 and a half inches deep. The size for this piece of top sheet plywood, I'm gonna be using a half inch plywood for the top sheet here. Same goes with the top sheet for this shell over here. So for the top, again, it's going to be half inch plywood and it's going to measure 25 inches deep and 20 and a half inches wide. For the sides, there's gonna be two sides. The side here is gonna measure 25 inches deep and nine and seven eighths inches tall. Okay, so in the back sheet here, it's gonna measure 19 and three eighths wide and it's gonna measure nine and seven eighths inches tall. So that's the dimensioning for the shell. This drawer, you are going to want to space it one inch from this front edge here, okay? If you don't move it back, when you close this door, that door is gonna hit the shell. So you must, must, must move this drawer one inch back. All right, and that's, uh, that's about it. All right, so the drawer is basically gonna be the same construction as the other drawers in the bottom section. The bottom sheet of the drawer is gonna be 23 and three quarter inches deep, and it's going to be 18 and three eighths inches wide. As for the sides, the sides are gonna be 23 and three quarter inches deep and eight and three quarter inches tall. And you're gonna have two pieces here for the side. The back piece is gonna be 17 and one eighth inches wide and it's gonna be eight and three quarter inches tall and you're gonna have one piece for this. And for the front, the front is going to be 19 and a quarter inches wide and it's gonna be nine and three quarter inches tall. So I don't know if you can hear it, but there's this really annoying hum that's going on right now and I think it's gonna kill this audio quality. 
So bear with me, this is the last portion. We're gonna get through this and then you're gonna know how to build this whole thing. That brings us to the slide tables. You're gonna have two of them and the tolerance is pretty tight for this. It's gonna be 19 and 1 16th inches wide and it's gonna be 28 and 13 16 inches long. And that is what is gonna sit on top of this bottom section right here. So we have these strips, okay, we have two strips on either side and they run the length of this entire thing. The middle strip and the edge strips are 29 and a half inches long and the width on the edge strips are 5 eighths inches and the width of the middle piece is one and a quarter inch. And then we have two strips at the back. So we have one strip here and another strip here. So I chose not to go all the way to the edge, leaving a little bit of a space here. You can choose to close it all off if you want, but uh, I just decided to leave a space. So for me, this is 17 and three quarter inches uh, long, and that's the same on both sides. And the width is five eighths inch. So once you have that, then you can bring the tables in. Okay, so these tables slot in perfectly just like that. And that is what it looks like uh, before we put the top section on. All along these strips where I have it screwed on, I basically have a washer around each of these screws. And I know it's not a conventional thing to use washers with screws, but it does the job because this is half inch thick, so is this and so is this. What this little washer does is it gives it enough clearance to let it slide nicely without giving it too much space. And the beauty of how long these tables are is that even if you pull it out, you have a usable portion of maybe about two thirds of this, you'll still have one third of it that's under covers. And so you'll have enough strength there to be able to support the table pretty much almost like three quarters the way out, you'll still have substantial strength. And when you're at camp, like I said earlier, you could pull these straight out and use them for whatever you want. So that is how this works. And then all you need to do is take that top piece. We're gonna line it up on top of this bottom piece over here. And we're gonna try and get the screws that go in to fit with these holes. Alright, so there you go. That's the, uh, the whole thing taken apart, explained, and put back together. Actually, there's one last thing, the ledges. So let's take a look at the ledges right now. Alright, so the ledges are the remaining pieces here. It basically runs the dimension of the top edge and uh, the back edge here for this top drawer. And in the back, it's basically, the back is split into two because it uh, could have just been one long strip, but I wanted to have uh, this rubber mat here and I wanted to have it secured. So I put it in between uh, this, uh, this ledge and the base. So it's not gonna move around uh, when you try and pull things off of it. Same thing with this, there's a rubber mat uh, that's just sitting on the top sheet right here. And this makes it really easy and it protects the wood. Left an extra flap here because in the FJ, there's a little bit of a surface here that you can, you know, you can either tuck this away if you need to use that, uh, that area over here, or you can kind of lift it up and uh, place it over top. And then now you'll have this nice protection for uh, the entire surface. For these tables here, I went and I cut out a little bit of a notch here and drilled a hole for the tables so that you just push them in, easily stick your finger and pull them out. It's a, it's a nice little feature. I'm gonna take a, one look at the clearance here. I'm gonna open the top drawer, okay. Look at that. That's one millimeter, folks. So this drawer just clears the door. So when you install this system, make sure to push it as far forward as possible, okay? And try and get it as far right as possible so that you have this clearance over here with the front, uh, with the top drawer.
So that's it. That's uh, my walkthrough on how to build uh, my FJ drawer system. It would have been better if I was actually going along with you while building this thing, but this is the best that I could do now. And I hope I packed enough information in there for you so that you don't run into any troubles when you attempt to build this thing. But yeah, if I've missed anything, just uh, leave me a comment and I'll for sure get back to you. I'm sorry this video took so long, but thank you for the continued support on this channel. If you haven't checked out my other videos, make sure to do so. It's got some incredible stuff and I have more incredible stuff coming. So hang tight. I'll see you guys next time.